Shall we just commit this time to the Lord? Heavenly Father, we just give you thanks once again for your Son, Jesus Christ. We thank you for him who is worth more than we could ever give you. We thank you that we've been born again into your family. We thank you for the fact that the love of Christ shines forth in our lives and that he lives in our life and he works in our life. And you're working to make us more like him. We just thank you for the many promises that you are doing for us. And we just pray that as this word is given forth, it would cause us to be encouraged and to renew our desire to grow in your word, giving you thanks for everything. In the name of your Son, our Lord, Jesus Christ. Amen. Is it on okay, Jerry? Yeah. Okay. I'm uh, going to keep speaking on uh, angels. i uh hopeful to get it finished soon. Lord willing, whenever it takes place. Uh, last week, I mentioned I was going to speak on uh, the ministering of angels. But before I do that, I'd like just to finish one one little bit in regards to the uh, to the fallen angels. Uh, with the fallen angels, the ones who are in Tataris are already under judgment. They've already been judged, but yet the f there's uh, coming a future day of judgment for them. Okay? Now, this also re should remind us and encourage us of the fact that Satan is also under judgment. He is restricted in what he can do in your life. And that there is coming a day when he will be judged. If you remember one of the Psalms, I don't remember exactly what one it was, but that's what it reminded me of, where... The writer of the psalm says, well, what about the evil ones? So they're prospering. They're getting, they're, everything's going good for them. And for the believers, it's going terrible. But then he ended up the psalm saying, but when I went into the house of the Lord, I saw the end. And he said, I rejoiced. And I was happy. You know, God is not thwarted. Judgment is going to take place upon Satan. We all know where it says in Matthew 24, where Matthew 25, where he's going to be cast into the lake of fire. That's his ending place. And that he is going to be judged. And he is going to be, for eternity, punished for his rebellion against God and for the evil deeds and works that he's done. Shouldn't that be an encouragement to us? He's our enemy. And he's already going to, going to be punished. We know that. That should encourage us as we continue our, our warfare here in this in this world for for the Lord. Now, as I uh, looked at the ministering of angels, there once again it divides into basically two groups: one that the holy angels do, and then there's the one that the evil angels do. Now, the good angels minister to us; <laughs> the evil angels certainly don't anything they seem to hinder us. So I don't call them ministering spirits to us. Although the Lord uses evil for good. Okay. As I looked at what the, at the angels, I thought first off, I try to, in my mind it's all a mumbo jumbo and I have to try to put it in an order. And what do the angels do First off, their main priority. Their main priority is worshiping the Lord. Okay? They do that in heaven. Now you can think of passages. There's one in Isaiah. There's uh, one in Revelation where they, where they, uh, before the Lord, and they sing, Holy, Holy, Holy. Revelation chapter 4. Uh, starting at verse 8 and the four living creatures had each of them six wings about him and they were full of eyes within and they rested not day and night saying holy 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 Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come these four living creatures we certainly know that they're not human beings none of us have wings and we also know that when you go back into Isaiah you have a created creature there who has wings, 
was a seraphim. Okay, so this is angels. And notice what they say, holy, holy, holy. They're worshiping God. And in Revelation, when uh, the apostle John falls down to worship one of them, the angel says, no, you only worship God. You only worship God. And in uh, the book of Hebrews, also, God commands the angels to worship his son. The, uh, which is interesting, as I mentioned one time before, the Jehovah Witnesses believe Jesus Christ to be an angel. And yet you can worship him, but yet that's a violation of scripture. God, the angels themselves say that you cannot worship anyone but God. And God commands us and the angels to worship his son. He must be deity. He cannot be a created angel. Scripture will not contradict itself. That would cause them problems. So sometime uh, you're talking to a Jehovah Witness and uh, the Lord leads the subject in regards to that. I'm not saying you go out and look for, for them. They're around. They'll stop by. Now they worship God. That's interesting. Their main priority is worshiping God. Now one of their other priorities is they praise Him. They sing praises unto Him. The Psalms refer to the fact of them doing this. But one of the things is, as they worship him and they praise him, they also do something else. They hear his word and they obey it. They do what he tells them to. Angel means messenger. He has a purpose. He goes and he uh, carries out God's commands. Goes and does this and does that. Whatever God tells him to do. Now, as he carries out God's commands, it shows that he's obedient. He does exactly what he was created to do. As, as I was thinking of what the angels do, I thought of this in regards to us, because the angels are also called the holy angels. Shouldn't we also be worshiping God? Shouldn't we also be praising him? Shouldn't we also be obedient to him? There's nothing that they do that we shouldn't also be doing. They've never, the holy angels have never sinned and will never sin. And us in our saved state should also be following the example of them, of what they do. Although the Lord Jesus Christ is our, is our main example, yet these created beings also follow uh, a way in leading their lives. Now, as they go and they do what God commands them to do, they do another interesting thing. I'm not going to refer, refer to the scriptures. I think most of you, these are thoughts for you to think about. So as you read the scriptures, you can think, yeah, well, Herod says this, and as you read it, it opens up other things to think about. But when they go and they carry out commands of the Lord, they go and take the word of God and present it to people. There are specific times in scripture where they came and they told somebody the will of God for them. Can anybody think of one? Yeah, Mary and Joseph. Very specific. Came and told, uh, when he came to Mary, he had a message for her from God. And it was in the sixth month the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail thou who art highly favored, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. When she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and considered in her mind what manner of greeting this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shalt call his name Jesus. And he shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. He comes and he tells what, God, what the message is for her. 
It also comes to Joseph. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was, re was minded to put her away privately. This is from Matthew chapter 1. And while he thought on these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. <coughs> Now, isn't that interesting? This angel comes and tells Joseph that he's... He, I, when I first used to read this, it's amazing, most of the passages that I came across are all are in regards to the uh, what we would call the Christmas story. Okay? And as I thought about him, this angel comes and he tells Joseph you know, to go and to take his wife. Not to be afraid. And it's a command to go and do this. And you know what? He's obedient. And he does exactly what he's told. Not only does he go and he take her as his wife, he does the other thing that he's told to do. He's told how to name the child. Okay? And thou, sh thou shalt call his name Jesus. <coughs> or in Hebrew, Joshua. Deliverer. For he shall save his people from their sins. <coughs> Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him, took unto him his wife, and knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. It's interesting, in that verse it says, and brought forth her firstborn son, because it was hers, it wasn't his, it was hers. It's interesting how scripture, there's just little words that are used and they're important. Her son. He was a stepfather in a sense. And he raised that child up as his own. And he treated him as his firstborn with all the rights and everything. So angels go and they give messages and they do exactly what they're told. And they expect the people who are told things to go and to do it also. It's interesting. They they probably find it very hard to imagine why we would be disobedient to God. They think he's terrific. They think he is the greatest thing that there is. You know, day and night, it says, day and night they stand before him and say, holy, holy, holy. And they don't tire. As they went through the scriptures, and when you go through it, you'll find one thing that's interesting about them. They're busy. They're continually <coughs> busy. They don't seem to have time to rest. It's a good thing that they're the way they're made, they're, as we would call, supernatural. They're extremely strong. They need to be. You know, it refers in one place where the angel was told to go, and like that, he went to where he was supposed to be. That's very fast. To go from heaven down to earth. Quickly. Didn't hesitate. We have them with Daniel. Where they come and they talk to Daniel and tell him messages and that. Now, we don't need an angel to come and tell us something, now, do we? We have the Word of God. A lot of people today, well, I need special revelation. I need something new. I need something additional. You know, Scripture says you won't add to it or take away from it. There's no need to. If you remember one of the main religions in the world now, they had a revelation from an angel. In fact, there's two of them who had revelations from angels. And Paul said, you know, beware of Satan. He'll come like an angel of light. Like an angel of light to deceive. It's a warning. It's a warning. Their angels minister to, to the saints. And they still minister to us. Now, as I began to look at the... I went from there to taking a look at how did they minister to the Lord Jesus Christ. They had a special special uh, way that they ministered to him. They ministered to him in, in a way unique to anybody else. First off, before he was, they came to Mary to give her a message about the child. 
They came to Joseph and gave him a message about the child. This is all before he had even come. Now from there they go, and when he's, he's still young, he's still a baby, remember the wise men come? The wise men come and they bring him the worship and gifts, and after they leave, and Herod becomes very angry because he's, he's been fooled by the wise men. They were very wise, weren't they? They didn't go back to him. They realized that uh, he was not what he was supposed to be. They bid and worshipped the king. The other one was a false king. So what did they do? They went another way home, and they didn't go and tell him about it. So what happens? Herod goes to go and kill all the babies in this in uh, the city. Doesn't he kill them all? <laughs> he missed one. He missed one. Because Joseph had a dream. And in the dream, an angel told him that he better leave. He better go. And take the wife and child with him, and off they go. So what happens? He does exactly what he's told. He gets up and goes. He takes her. Now, I, I thought that was interesting. Because you notice he comes to the head of the house to the husband and gives a warning that what he should do, the action that he should take to protect his household. And Joseph does it. He didn't go to Mary and tell her. He went to God as in, some people call it a pecking order. We call it the authority. There's the head of the house. And God doesn't break the chain of command that he set up. And so he does that. So what happens? Off he goes. Now when it's safe to come back, he's told again in a dream. It doesn't say that he uh, gets another angel telling him. It says in a dream. I could only think that perhaps it was an angel again. But it says in a dream. And he's told again to bring them back. So what does he do? He brings them back then. We as the head of the house, we need to be earnestly listening for the Lord to give us messages. Being concerned about when you know, that little quiet voice says, uh, I think you should do this or I think you should do that. Or things aren't quite the way they should be. Our wife have what they call uh, mother's intuition. Something that's in them that's uh, natural for them. They make decisions that we have to sit and ponder about and say, how'd she ever come up with the right answer? It took me a couple of days to come up with the same thing. They come up with it like that. So, there go the... There go the angels again, doing work for Jesus Christ. He's special, isn't he? Isn't he special? He's got a special name given to him. They protect him, okay? And he goes off. What happens to him after he's baptized? What's the very first thing that happens to him after he's baptized? The temptation. The Spirit leads him off to be tempted. Forty days out there. I'd be hungry after one day. And I could last for 40. But he's out there for 40 days. And he doesn't falter. He doesn't sin. It's impossible for God. You can't tempt him. Even though it says he's tempted. Strange thing. But because he's in the flesh. But he doesn't give in. And what happens to him? After the temptation is all over. It says he's ministered to by the angels. Isn't that interesting? Angels come and minister to him. Don't ask me what they do. I presume that they feed him. They take care of him. Now then the next time I come across a passage where the angels come and an angel comes and ministers to him and strengthens him. When was the one time he seemed, he seemed to be the weakest again? In the garden. Yeah, in the garden. And he was anguishing being made sin for us. And it says an angel came and strengthened him. By him coming, he strengthened him. He wasn't forgotten and he wasn't forsaken. That's the way I read it. You read it and see how the Lord speaks to you on it. But he was strengthened by that fact. Then the next time, next time angels Angels watched the resurrection. They watched it. 
They were there. And they saw it take place. You have uh, them coming to the tomb. We have the one coming down and rolling back the stone. And as you read the difference of accounts, you'll find there's one and then there's some, there's two mentioned. This is all regards to the Lord Jesus Christ. They watched him be raised from the dead. He didn't need the tomb opening for himself. He could go right through it. He left the, the clothes that he'd been wrapped up in. He came out of them. And he, he didn't need the door opening. He left there without the door being opened. Because nothing could bind him. Nothing could stop him. The tomb had been sealed. The soldiers were outside. They couldn't stop him. The angel rolled back the stone for us. For the people who were going to come. Remember what they said? Well, who will roll the stone back for us? Who will roll the stone back for us? God rolled the stone back. And it says that when he rolled it back, he rolled it way back. There's a natural groove where it would be rolled and was rolled back from there. An angel has immense power. A stone is nothing to him. <coughs> so he rolls it back out of the way. And the people come, and what are they told? The one who you seek, he's not here. He's not here. He's raised from the dead. He's gone before you to Galilee, just like he said. He's gone before you. Yeah. And the next time, I'm just giving you little pieces in regards to the life of Jesus Christ. These are only some of the places, but it's important. Before he ascends, in the book of Acts, when he ascends up, what's that, what does it say? Right after Acts chapter 1. And he gives them, verse 8, But ye shall receive power after the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and ye shall be witness un unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in, all Samar and in Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. And when he had spoken these things while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, who said also, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, who is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as you, ye have seen him go into heaven. I believe these are angels. Because it makes a point of saying, Two men stood by them in white apparel. To stand out. Okay? One of the other interesting things about this, they visibly watched him go up until the cloud hit him from them. Now it says in this one, these two men, or as I believe them to be angels, says, in like manner, the same Jesus who is taken up from you into heaven shall so come in like manner. Just the way he went, he's going to come back. You'll hear a lot of people saying, well, Christ returned to the earth, invisible or something like that. That doesn't stand up to scripture. He left visibly, he will visibly return. You will be able to see him do that. See the lie. He returned invisible. If you don't study the scriptures, you don't be you don't see how the lie stands out so easily, so quickly. Some people are sure he should be able to return invisible to this earth. No, he won't. He has a physical body. He wants to be seen. He's got nothing to hide. All these things are things that the scriptures record as, record as having already taken place. Now there are still two, at least one major thing where the angels are going to still, in a special way, be with the Lord Jesus Christ when he returns at the second advent. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. This is at the second advent. He will return and he will bring all the angels with him. We will also be with him. This is not the rapture. This is at the second advent. And these angels will come with him. All the holy angels are going to come with him. This is a future event. 
Now, some people also believe that there is another event where, an, where an angel will be involved. I will give it to you also. It's from second, from First Th Thessalonians. Okay. For the Lord himself, himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. We're referring to our exit from this earth, to the rapture. And it says, because it says here, with the voice of the archangel, they believe there will be an archangel with the Lord Jesus Christ. And with the trump of God. Well, the main one I'm concerned about is that the Lord Jesus Christ will be there. As to the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God, I believe this is descriptive terms in regards to the Lord Jesus Christ. His voice is authoritative. The trump, the nation of Israel had trumpets, and there were trumpets that were to gather them together. And there will be the trump, in a sense. Remember the Lord Jesus Christ? There will be a day when all in the grave will hear my voice. Well, there are those of us who will be dead, or may be dead. There are some who are dead already. And the Lord's voice will raise them up. And I believe that these are two, two descriptive terms, the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God, what he can do. As to whether it's with, there is an archangel and there is an actual trump of God, I don't know. My, I'm happy that the Lord's going to call me and I'm going to be with him. Okay? So you can think about that and come up with your own uh, opinion. And I'd like to hear it, what you believe. Feed me too. Give me food for thought. I need it. Chew on what I give you. If you don't like it, spit it out. Okay? The, the next set of ministering I'm going to do, Lord willing, the next time he uh, has me, whenever it is, is in regards to the angels ministering to nations. Minister to nations. Okay? They minister to the church. And they minister specifically to the saints, to people, to nations, to the church itself. It's interesting, they, they, they're they very busy. We're busy as saints, aren't we? You don't have enough time in the day, do you? Can't get everything done? Well, the angels, they're very, very interesting. Their name is interesting, what they do is interesting. I'm going to leave you with something to think about. Isn't it interesting that to the church in the book of Revelation, and he says, and unto the angel of the church in specific place. To the angel of the church in a specific place. To a messenger of God in a specific place. I don't believe that he's referring to an actual angel in <coughs> in human form. I don't think Dr. Clock's an angel. I've watched him. He's not perfect. But you know what? He functions as a messenger of God. And he strives to give God's message. And he strives to be obedient. And doesn't each one of us strive to also be like an angel? <coughs> We're not. Our kids, we, we know they're not little angels. They're, we enjoy them, we love them, they're terrific. We know our own flaws. But you know what? <coughs> God has made promises in his word, and he made them to fallen human beings. And that includes me, and I'm thankful because I'm not perfect, and I need his promises. I watch what the angels do in the Bible, the protection that they provide, the different things that they do, and I'm only asked to do a few little things, to be a witness for him, to be an obedient child, to serve him. And it's not that hard. It doesn't seem so until you get right down to doing it. But you know what? It's one step at a time. That's all it is. And each one of you here tries. Each one of you here tries to do what the Lord would have him to do. Each one of you tries to walk with him. He walks with you. 
and you walk with him. And you don't quit. And you don't give up. You stumble and you fall. You identify with Peter some days. Sinking. You identify with him. Every time when uh, the way I go home, uh, one of the churches in uh, the city, they got a maybe like a billboard in front of their place, and they put up little sayings. I always like them. They're cute, you know. Uh, Jesus uh, gives peace in the storm. That's the latest one they got up. And isn't that a cute thing to think about? You know, it caused me to think about him a different way. When he was in the boat, he could go to sleep. He was calm. He was peaceful. But we're in him. It can be stormy. It can be going on out there. And we can lay down and go to sleep and rest because we're in Christ. The storm can blow out there. Satan can rage. It's like a raging lion walking around seeking whom he may devour. Can he devour you? No. You know that? He can't devour you. You may think he can. He's going to make out like he can. It's his lie. Satan is a liar. He can't devour you. He can't destroy you because you belong to the Lord. You're His. And He wants to make you think you can be tripped up so badly just like you never were His that you can't, you can't walk with Him. You know, I enjoyed it. The, all these little things that the, you know, that the kids learn, don't we really need them? They're so simple, so basic. We really need them. We're the ones who should be singing these all the time. To the kids, it's just words, but to us it really means something. It really does. I enjoy watching them. I enjoyed this morning. You know, I smiled all through it because I thought it was terrific. Not that anybody was making any mistakes or anything like that. I didn't see that. I saw what they were doing. Isn't that great? That's how the Lord looks on us, I hope. He sees what we're doing. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the angels that ministered unto your Son. We thank you for the angels that minister unto us and that look down to watch us, to see these frail human beings that are bringing you glory. It's a mystery to them, and they desire to watch it. They desire to see us involved in a warfare that even they taxes their strength.